other places. Okay, and one more, and this is a business item. I'm going to ask the pastor to please help us with the membership transfer. There, there, is, a, there is a story that, uh, that is very interesting that he knows, and I, I asked him to, to please help us with this. Good morning, church family. This is an opportunity once again to um, vote some members in, and I'll start first with the first reading, so we wouldn't vote this um, family in. It's for next week, and this is Joshua and Hope Vasquez from the Bellevue SDA Church in Florida. So they're transferring their membership here. Uh, they were thinking of, of moving back to Florida, but they like Tridelphia so much that they said, we're staying. And so praise the Lord. And they're helping us with our health ministry this year and just want to continue to lift them up in prayer. But we will be voting their transfer of membership next week. But today we will be doing the second reading for Christina Espinosa from Amigos de Jesus Church in Tacoma Park, Maryland. And as many of you know, um, Christina's husband unexpectedly passed away um, 10 days ago, July 24. And they wanted this um, to be their home church. In fact, they were invited by another family, the Rutia family, who's here with us today. Um, and they shared with them, you know, the beautiful children's ministry that we have here at Tridelphia and the way people get along with each other and how they care for each other. And so when they came, they fell in love with Tridelphia. They did. Um, but sadly, today, um, Oscar is no longer with us. But today we have the privilege of voting Christina into membership. So moved. Okay, it comes as a recommendation from our church board and it's been moved. It, second. All in favor, please raise your hand and say amen. Amen. Those opposed, say no. It is carried. We want to keep um, the Espinosa family in our prayers. Yes, especially this afternoon we will be having a memorial service here at our church. We'll have many visitors come. We'll have um, co-workers come. Oscar was working at the Senate, so his co-workers are coming, the U.S. Senate. So they'll be here um, for this special memorial service, and we thank you for keeping them in your prayers. Thank you, Pastor. And again, welcome to Triadelphia. Let's open our Bibles. We're going to go to Psalm 113, and we're going to read the complete psalm, nine verses. So Psalm 113, and it reads, Psalm 113, 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth? He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants a barren woman a home, like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. And with these thoughts, and as far as possible, we'll kneel for the invocation. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath. Thank you for the family here gathered together to worship you. And most of all, thank you for Jesus, our hope, 
our future. Lord, this has been a complex week. You know the feelings in our hearts. And uh, we know that uh, you understand us so well. We lost one of our loved ones. And that makes us very sad. But Lord, we praise your name today because Jesus conquered death. And we praise your name because we know that soon, when Jesus comes, we'll get to see Oscar again and our loved ones. Lord, how can we thank you for this, for all that Jesus has done on our behalf, for your work, for the work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us so much, Lord. Today, please help us in our minds to go to that glorious morning, the resurrection morning. Help us to put our minds in the scenes of heaven and the beauty that eternally will bring. Lord, we want to see the face of Jesus, our Savior. And we want to be together with the loved ones forevermore. And as we are here in this world, we humbly ask that you would smile on us and keep on blessing us. We need you, Lord. This week, I want to lift up Christina and Nikki, the Espinosa family, the rest of the family, the friends, because they're mourning. Please, Lord, give them one of those special hugs that only you can give. Lord, we ask for troubling mercies for all of those that are traveling to Gillette, for all at ASI, our brothers and sisters witnessing at uh, the fair. Please bless them. May all of those that are seeking honestly for you come to that booth. Lord, we ask for Linda, for Dr. Diop, for Siku and family. Lord, we, our needs are plentiful, but your grace and your mercy and your power are so abundant that are completely limitless. And we praise your name for who you are. May we see Jesus today as we worship you, and may others, as they see us, know that we have seen the Lord. In his beautiful name, amen. Let's all stand and sing 229, our opening song. 229.
seated. And a very good morning, church. It's good to see you, even though many are away, but you are here, and that's important. Amen. So today, our offering is for local offering to pay for our lights and for all the other expenses that we have. So let me read a text in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Paul here is writing to the Corinthians about finances. And he says, Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. As it is written, he scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase <coughs> the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. So God admonishes us to be liberal and to give freely, not grudgingly. We ask the deacons to come forward. We'll have a prayer, and then they will go and collect the money. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you most of all for Jesus, our Savior, and we thank you for the many blessings we receive from your hands day by day. Thank you also for material blessings, and we pray that you will help us to be liberal in our giving, that uh, the work may move forward and may it soon be finished, that Jesus can come. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
And now is the time for the children to come forward. And they love doing it and collecting the money. So children, don't be shy, come forward. How are you? Yeah. It's August. Are you ready to go back to school? No. 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 Of course you can that. All right. Won't be long, will it? All right. Do you know what happens in August? It's time for fairs. Who's ever been to a fair? Because this week we took the stuff. Did you know our church has a booth at the Howard County Fair? So Triadelph is going to be there greeting people and talk. So it's a fair. Now, when little Wayne was smaller, your age, oh, the fair was life. They looked forward to the fair all year long. It was the best thing. Why do you think fairs are so good? What, what do we enjoy about fairs? What? Huh? R the rides. There are rides at the fair. What do you think is at the fair? Yeah, yeah, food, the food at the fair. You all ever heard of these things called elephant ears? Oh, they're big flat donuts with cinnamon and sugar. How about caramel apples? Oh, you get those at the fair. And what else do you get at the fair? What? You get to ride the fair. How about the animals? Isn't that fun? Well, there was something new that little Wayne fell in love with at the fair. Who knows what that is? What does that look like? Did you know at the fair, they had this thing with tractors. A bunch of farmers back years ago, and would you believe it started in Ohio, had this great idea that they took a tractor, and if they hooked it up to a sled, they wanted to see whose tractor was the strongest. So they invented this thing called tractor pulls. It doesn't seem to be advancing. All right, so what they did was they took a tractor and they hooked it up to this wagon and they would see how strong the tractor is, how far it could pull the wagon. And the man who had the strongest tractor won a prize. Next slide, please. So what they did was, but as everything happens, one guy says, well, I can build a bigger tractor and I can make a stronger tractor. So they start making them bigger and stronger. 
and bigger and stronger. And it got louder and that got crazier. Man, it's the, and people start filling the stands to see these big, strong tractors pull. They kept getting bigger. Man, these things are powerful. Do you know that tractor right there has 5,000 horsepower? That tractor has the power of 5,000 horses. And when it goes on the track, it is loud and it shakes your body. And little Wayne was sitting in the stands and it was so fun. So I'm going to show you an example of what it's like at the tractor pulls. All right, watch this. It looks like a train. And man, and that guy sits up there. So you know what, though? It's always somebody that wants to do something more. So they got to that level, and they said, you know what? If you can have one motor, I can put two motors on my tractor. And I can go stronger. And the next farmer said, really, two motors? Huh, that's nothing. I'll put three motors on my tractor, and I'll be even louder and faster and stronger. And that guy said, really? Well, I'll take two airplane motors and put on my tractor. Those are called Allison aircraft motors. They were finding motors from World War II planes. And the next guy said, really? Two airplane motors? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a jet motor on my tractor. Jet motor, that's nothing. I put two jet motors on my tractor. And the next guy says, that's nothing still. I'll put four jet plane motors on my tractor and I'll be stronger than you. What kind of man would strap himself to four jet motors? There's only four on a plane and he's on the ground. And the next guy goes, really? I'll strap six car motors on my tractor. That tractor probably has about 20,000, know, it's like about, well, between 15 and 20,000 horsepower. And you all, when they go down the track, it is so loud, it squeezes your chest. You can't breathe. <gasps> and everybody has earphones, they put their fault. Oh my God, but it's so exciting. And it just rumbles and shakes and it throws dirt all over everybody. And everybody loves the tractor pulls. Now, if you want to go to a tractor pull, you let me know after. Because little Wayne and I, we still go to tractor pulls every year, at least a couple of them. So if you want to go, you let me know I'm going to take you to a tractor pull. And little Wayne got to thinking, you know what? If these are the most strong, the most powerful machines on earth, and it's a competition, do you think in heaven the ev angels ever get in competition with each other? The Olympics are going on. Could you imagine the angels racing each other? And one angel saying, well, I'm going to go out to Pluto and back faster than you. And the next day, oh, that's nothing. I'm going to go out to a further galaxy. Do you think they ever compete with each other like that to see who can do more and more? Who is the most powerful of them all? Who has the most power? Who? God. The, if we think this is powerful and this takes our breath away, Wait until we get to go to that fair on that great day when Jesus shows up. He's going to take our breath away just with his mat. All the millions of angels are going to come with them. And all of the, oh, the noise is going to be their wings flapping and, and them singing. And it's going to be so aw. Oh, we're all going to just going to go, oh, Jesus. Greater than any tractor pull ever. Don't you want to see that? Don't you want to be there? Well, what we have to do is we have to be obedient to our parents, obedient to our teachers when we go back to school, read our lesson, and do our best so we get to go to see those powerful beings in the universe. Dear God, thank you for your, your show of power in our lives this week, Lord. We couldn't have made it without your power, Lord God, and we thank you. Would you be with us this week, and especially our children, Lord, so they will get to see, understand, and know how powerful you really are in their lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.
You will notice a special feature in our bulletin, and this is where we recognize our pathfinders who've done a Pathfinder Bible study challenge. So besides going to Gillette, Wyoming, um, our pathfinders are getting ready to go, many of them tomorrow, some of them have already left. Um, They were challenged to study the Bible, to have an in-depth Bible study of our fundamental beliefs. I would like to thank Shane Remmers, Tracy Williams, Ted Ashton, um, for taking the time to study with our pathfinders every Sabbath. They met for about an hour, two hours, twice a week they were meeting um, to be able to go through this series of Bible studies. And I would like to invite them to come, if you're able to come, because we have some certificates we would like to give to our pathfinders. Not all of them are here, but I'm going to ask... Um, Trace, if you would read the names of all those who participated. Sure. Thank you so much. Get my glasses out of my hair. All right. Yeah. Oh, good. You're here, too. And is Ian here? Ian is Come here. Yes. Up, Come on up. He's our Pathfinder yes. director. So um, I'll give a little bit. Of, we had, um, so the Bi- Pathfinder Bible Challenge, Bible Study Challenge, was offered earlier this spring. So we reached out to all of our Tridelphia kids that were going, and we had several locally that participated in group study and we also have a pretty good group of kids that are coming with our group to try to to pathfinder campery that aren't here like the klimchuk children are coming Mm -hmm. and going with us to campery and they did the um the bible studies online so i see andres is here so we've got we've got them covered as well um and as pastor said some of our kids have already headed out for Campery, so we will make sure they get their certificate this week. Do you want to read the names? And sure. If you're here, please come up. Sorry, we'll, of the kids that are here or everybody? Just go ahead and read them all. Okay, so yeah. the ones, we've got some kids that have completed it. Um, okay. Noah Kim is not here. Solomina Klimchuk and Ustam Klimchuk. Andre, I have your certificates to give to them. Uh, Vicki, Stephanie. Stephanie. Hey, there she is, Stephanie. There we go. Um, Liam. Come on up, Liam. I didn't see you hiding back there. Daniel, Theron, uh, that I get that Vicky has come, Vicky that here, and there's some kids that are continuing to work through it. They're almost done, but I'm going to call their names out. All right, Caitlin, mm-hmm. I'm going to... Hold on to it until you guys get it done, but you're close to it. Want me to give it to him? We're going to give it to him. We're going to give it to him. <laughs> London, come on up here, sweetheart. Amen. Good job. Amen. Um, wait a minute. Let's see some people hiding. Emma and Jody and Layla Yates. I have been working on getting their names because... Layla and Emma are twins, and I told them that if I'm not getting their names right, I gotta do some push ups. So, uh, but we're not gonna do any today. So, both of them come on up so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> See, I got in trouble. So, they go push ups tomorrow morning. And Jody. Good job, good job. Amen. All right, I think I've gotten all the names done. We said Noah, Cam, and Vicky, and Solomina, and yes, got them. All right. I'm going to have a prayer um, with them. And we're going to have a prayer for yes. you guys. Yes. Um, pastor's going to pray, or I'm going to pray? Pastor's going to pray. <laughs> um, we're, we're grateful for their accomplishment, and we know that 
as they study the Bible, they will continue to know how to relate to God and to each other. That's basically what our fundam fundamental beliefs are all about, how we relate to one another. Today, all of you have completed this study Bible, and there are some of you who are still about to finish it. And there are some of you maybe out there that would like to start having a Bible study. We want to encourage you to take time to study the Bible. And any of us up here would be glad to connect you with someone so they can study the Bible with you. We are happy for your accomplishment. And so we're going to ask God's blessing at this moment as we continue to walk in his ways. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the time these young people, as well as our adults, have taken to open your word and to see that there is a God who loves us, who is compassionate, who is faithful, who is kind, and who has the greatest plan for each one of us. And that is for all of us to make it to the finish line. And Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be upon them. And as they go to Gillette, May they be witnesses of your great love to all those who see them. We thank you for what you are doing in each one of their lives. We ask your blessing upon them and their families. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And uh, just before they go, I just want to thank Tracy for spearheading this. She looked it up and saw this. I had had my hands full. And she saw it and said, hey, we should do this. And she ran with it. And also the help of Ted and Mrs. Remmers for helping us to get these kids, to get it done, and all the parents that helped out as well. Appreciate that very much. Thank you, team. Happy Sabbath. Happy, Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Hope you all are doing well today. Um, today I'm going to sing a little uh, hymn. This is not in the Adventist hymn, though, so many of you may not have heard it. It's called The End of the Road, and this arrangement will be uh, a Walter Artes arrangement. And um, this, this hymn always reminds me of the text in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul is at the end of his life. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous, will judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And you know, when I was a little kid, I, 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 used to, I used to run track, and it was always so hard because I would get right to the finish line and I would just give out my breath. Would be, ah, ah, ah. I just, it's just so hard. But I realized my, my, uh, my gym teacher told me, don't focus on your own breath. Focus on getting to a certain point on the track, and you will make it. And I realized when I started to do that, I always made it to the finish line. And friends, a lot of times we're focused on our, our own works, but the only way we'll get to the end of the road is if our eyes are always on Jesus now. So please enjoy. When the long day is ended and the journey Come to the end of the road. There'll be light in the sky, in the palace on high, when I come to the end. Sweet relief from all care will be waiting me there when I come to the end of the road. When the long day is ended, the journey is on. When I enter that blessed
Thank you, Kobe. It's always a blessing to have you sing for us. I will be reading the Sabbath thought. You can find it inside your bulletin. I see some visitors, so you can open and join me in reading that. In the matchless gift of his son, God has encircled the whole world with an atmosphere of grace as real as the air which circulates around the globe. All who choose to breathe this life-giving atmosphere will live and grow up to the stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. You can find this in Steps to Christ on page 68. Now let's open our Bibles in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. That is 2 Timothy 2, 1, 2, 3. And it says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach, to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church family. Good to see you all here this morning. We were blessed with a beautiful children's story, amen? Amen. And blessed by amazing singing. Amen? A lot has been going on in our church this week. And I know that for the Espinosa family, this seems like it's a very, very hard road to walk upon. And there just seems to be no end to this struggle. But praise the Lord for his Holy Spirit, amen? That can give us comfort, that can give us strength, that can give us faith, that can give us love to continue on this path. A difficult one, as we will see. One that Paul himself experienced. One that Paul himself writes about. And writes to someone he loves dearly. Timothy, his beloved son. He recognizes something. He recognizes that Timothy is struggling. How many of us struggle? 
Timothy was struggling. He was discouraged. You see, his mentor, Paul, was in prison again. And sometimes when bad things happen to good people, something like doubt comes in and starts to make us think maybe God doesn't really care. Maybe God isn't that powerful and strong as he claims to be. Maybe God has forgotten us. And Timothy was struggling. But Paul saw in Timothy someone who could do the work and do it well. Paul saw in Timothy somebody who could succeed in sharing the good news, the gospel to all who came to the city of Ephesus and beyond. And Paul wanted to share with Timothy that even though he was in prison and even though he knew the end was near, that his life would be poured as a sacrifice, as a drink sacrifice. He had some words for Timothy. Because he said, Timothy, I know the gift that God has put in you. I know the faith that God has given you. A faith that can move mountains. A faith that I saw in your grandmother, Lois. A faith that I saw in your mother, Eunice. And we praise God for our mothers of faith. Amen? Who pray for us. Who encourage us. When we don't know what to do next. Praise the Lord for their faithfulness. Praise the Lord for praying for their children and their adopted children as well. Paul writes to Timothy, knowing that his time is short. In fact, 2 Timothy is the last letter that Paul writes. His last letter. And he writes it to a person, a young person, who is discouraged, who is alarmed. And I believe he wrote this letter also for you and for me, knowing that we also will go through difficult times. We will face great challenges. But by God's grace, we will reach the finish line. Amen? The Olympics, they're going on right now. And many of us are looking at some of the participants in their different events. And it's always interesting not so much to just see how they perform and how they reach the end and only three only three of all these amazing athletes get the award, gold, silver, or bronze. But for me, it's more interesting to see their story, how they got there, and how they had to get through so many challenges, financial, physical, mental, because this is not just physical, but also mental, and how they overcame. But it's also interesting for me to hear sometimes that even those who get the gold medal and those who have even reached to have four or five gold medals, at the end, they share with the world that they feel empty. Like they haven't accomplished anything. Like all this effort and all this strife and all this fighting and all this doesn't mean anything, even when they've achieved to receive the gold medal. 
But Paul recognized it, that there is a greater race and more important race that each one of us here today is running called the Christian race. And we're all invited to make it to the very end. And we're all invited to receive something called the crown of righteousness. Because it doesn't matter if you come in first or you come in last. What matters is that you make it. Amen? And you will receive the crown of righteousness. And as Kobe shared um, the Bible text of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse... Let me see it here. And now I'm lost. <laughs> Seven. Thank you, Kobe. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So how do we get there? Praise the Lord for 2 Timothy chapters 1 and 2. Because in this section, Paul tells Timothy what to do, how to reach the goal, where to put his Time and attention in preparing for this important race. And the way he does it, I believe, is by using a specific word, one that maybe sometimes we read over because Paul uses it a lot, and it's this adverb called therefore. Have you heard of that word before? Therefore. For this reason... For this purpose, therefore, and the first time that this therefore appears is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. If you have your Bibles, please open it to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, where it says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God. Yes, Paul had seen in Timothy faith. And he had seen this faith in his family. And he said, Timothy, I know you are discouraged. I know things are not looking well. But I want you to make that faith grow. I want you to put it into practice I want you to apply it to everything you do. Do it faithfully. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Timothy, run faithfully. You will reach the end, and you will receive this crown. Verse 8, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. It was trying for Timothy to see Paul in prison. In those days, it was something that meant basically God had abandoned you. And he was asking, God, why are you letting Paul, this great missionary, this great evangelist, go to prison? And not only to prison, but it looks like he is about to die. Rumors are he's the next one. He's on death row. Timothy, do not be ashamed of what God is doing in your life. 
of the testimony of our Lord. And also, when things don't seem to go right, when things don't seem to be fair, when things seem to be overwhelmingly wrong, continue. Share with me, Paul says, in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. Timothy, be courageous. It's going to be hard. It's going to be the hardest thing you ever do in life. But have faith. Trust that God is with you. That he has called you. That he has a purpose for you. Which was given before time begun. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong. Because God has given you a spirit of power. Be strong as you face the challenges. But face them in the grace that is only found in Jesus Christ. He's our model. He's who we look to in difficult moments. He's the one who teaches us how to live, how to speak, how to work, how to pray, how to help, how to encourage be strong in the grace that is in Jesus. And what Paul does is he once more uses this word, therefore, in verse 3. You, therefore, must endure hardship. And he gives us three examples. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Soldiers pay a big price to fulfill the mission. They're willing to risk their life for it. And not only for the mission, but for their fellow soldiers. They're a team. They work together. And Paul says, as a good soldier, as a spiritual soldier, don't let anything distract you, Timothy. Don't entangle yourself in the affairs of this life. But please him who has enlisted you. The second example that he gives us is of an athlete. Verse 5, And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Rules are important. They're there to safeguard us all. Timothy, play by the rules. Follow the word of God. Something that I've also noticed in the Olympics is that not everybody plays by the rules. And they might even get the gold medal. And four years later, they find out. That gold medal is what? Gone. And not only is it gone, but they're banned to play that same event or discipline. They can't participate. Banned for four years, for eight years. Play by the rules, Timothy. And you will receive the crown of righteousness. 
And the last example he gives us is that of the hard-working farmer. And he says, the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Farmers work hard. They sow that seed, they water it, they take care of it till it produces fruit. But when it produces fruit, there's great joy in that household. And we are invited also to plant seeds of righteousness, seeds of kindness, seeds of joy, seeds of patience, seeds of long-suffering, seeds of self-control, seeds that come from the Holy Spirit. And we will rejoice in the great fruit that God wants to see in each one of our lives and in the lives of those around us. He reminds Timothy that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to the gospel. And that is great news, amen? Jesus is risen. And Paul believed that death was only temporary. He knew that Jesus would come and raise him up as well. Timothy, be courageous. Work hard. Don't let anything distract you. Play by the rules. And you will do well. And he also tells Timothy that this is the reason why he is in prison. This is the reason why he is to the point of change, chains. But he says, the word of God is not chained. Amen? The word of God is available to all who need it. And he tells Timothy the reason why he goes through all this suffering. And I hope this encourages you today as you go through your own challenges, as you go through your own sufferings, as you go through difficult moments. And this is what Paul says, Therefore, verse 10, last one, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal, eternal glory. We suffer, not just because we want the crown, but because we want others to also have a crown, so that they may also receive the fruits of the labor that Jesus has done in each one of them. And Paul concludes this little section with a hymn, with a song. Some call it the hymn of faithfulness. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. Is that good news, brothers and sisters? If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. The other two, that's something Christians don't want to do, okay? And he tells us why, too. If we deny him, he will also what? Deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Paul writes this beautiful letter to Timothy, encouraging him to continue on this race, to continue running faithfully, to work hard, to not let anything distract him, to play by the rules, to be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And he promises him and he promises us all that if we fight 
the good fight, if we finish the race, if we keep the faith, finally, there is laid up for me, for you, and for all who make it to the end, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to us on that day, and not only to us, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. Let's all turn to 537, He Leadeth Me. Let's stand for the closing song. Father, we thank you again for being our faithful leader, our faithful guide, our faithful friend, our faithful Savior. Father, we thank you for your compassion. We thank you for Jesus and for his great sacrifice on behalf of each one of us. And today we would like to commit our lives to once again running this race. Some of us might feel discouraged today. Some of us might feel sad today. 
Some of us might be unsure if to continue. But we thank you for this beautiful letter, 2 Timothy, chapters 1 and 2. And for the words of encouragement that we find in it, inviting us to be faithful, inviting us to be strong in the grace of Christ, inviting us to continue on to the very end. And by your grace, receiving one day this beautiful crown of righteousness. I ask your blessing upon each family here. I ask your blessing upon those who are watching online. We ask your blessing upon our friends, church members who are not here today. Father, what we ask is that your Holy Spirit will continue to dwell in us and to help us each step of the way. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. seated.